Hey guys, it's Preston with White Metal Games bringing another tutorial video today. Today we're going to be showing you how to paint thatchworked armor on these new Kurnathi elf models from the Beastgrave set. This came out from Games Workshop, so check it out. We've already pre-shaded the model with our white paint from above, creating a zenithal highlight. This is uh, established nice bright highlights on all the tops of the shapes and nice dark shadows in the recesses. And so this is the first step is just make sure that we have a nice breadth of contrast here. We want to have areas that are completely white and areas that are completely black and all of those gray tones in between. So we're going to start off with the airbrush today, guys. So our first step is going to be with Mahogany from Vallejo Model Air. If you don't have this color, that's fine. You can use any kind of dark reddish brown, but we will be thinning it into a glaze into our airbrush here. And with this color, I'll be doing what I call an underspray technique, where I'm basically going to be coming in from the opposite angle that we did with our zenithal highlight. So we're coming in from below instead of from above. Just adding a little bit of thinner there. Check out my glow on my glove. Looks pretty good, nice and glazy, nice and thin. And I'm gonna spray this onto the model in this upwards direction. Letting the angle do a lot of work for me. Letting this mahogany naturally settle into all these shadow areas and the recesses underneath the model. So we're just, we're just lightly glazing this on, guys. Building up this mahogany in the shadows. Yeah, it's all over the model. And then we'll also come in for this particular model. Let's do an overall glaze on the legs. So now we're coming in from the downwards angle as well. Now to start off our armor, we can see that she has the thatch work pattern on her chest, as well as this shoulder pad here, as well as her quiver on her back. So we're going to be spraying this mahogany onto the bottoms of all these major shapes. So the bottom of the quiver, we're going to apply this into the shadow. Same thing with her chest, we'll put it into the shadows here. We're using our pre-shade step as a guide so that we know the correct places to place these tones. We're aiming for those black and dark gray areas with this step. It's coming on the very side of the shoulder pad there. There we go. Next color we're going to be using is this nice deep burgundy color from P3 called Sanguine Base. For these uh, colors out of the paint pot like this, I always have an uh, extra brush kind of on hand. So that I can move the paint from the pot to the well of the airbrush. Just need a little bit. We're only applying this color into the shadows of the armor plates, much like we did with the previous step. In fact, if you're not painting these exact models, you could forego the previous step. That mahogany is not only made to kind of build up a nice deep brown that this can, this red can build up from, but also to establish a lot of other colors on the figure. But you could just start with this deep uh, burgundy if you'd like. Test out my spray on my glove there. And so same thing, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer here. So we're applying this uh, sanguine base into all the shadows on the armor here. We've got the chest plate there. Make 
shoulder pad. Just want to get into the recess in the hair here. Shoulder pad. And then the quiver. There we go. I think I'll have to do the, uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to do the, the arrow fletching as well. Okay. So with our sanguine base established there in the shadows, we're going to now start building up our muted autumn reds. Alright, so for the third step, guys, next color I'm using is Rust Brown from Reaper. It's a nice kind of orangey, reddish brown. Alright, so with this color, I'm going to come in from the opposite angle now with the Rust Brown. see how as we apply this rust brown to the highlights it starts to blend in with our sanguine base in those transitional areas there. So on the shoulder pad as well. And while we're doing this as we move into smaller and smaller areas, we're just trying to be more and more careful to avoid any kind of overspray onto other areas of the model, like the skin, and that sort of thing. Quiver. On this in particular model, I'm going to uh, also apply this tone into the the base of the hair, like the tail and their hair on their head. Trying to avoid the face while I do it. So I'm spraying away from the face. The last step with the airbrush that we're going to do is we're going to take a much more vibrant red now. This is Kador Red Base, which is basically about as vibrant of a basic primary red color as you can get. And we just need a very small bit of this because we're going to be thinning this down a lot. We're just going to be using this as a very thin, thin glaze just to kind of help adjust some of these reds, specifically in the mid-tone areas, It'd be a bit more vibrant of a red. That way we have nice kind of desaturated red highlights and shadows, but a nice vibrant red mid-tone. So you can see on my glove just how thin this is. Super thin. I'm just going to come in and, and spray this into the transitional areas where my rust brown is kind of blending together with my sanguine base from the two previous steps. particular model we're going to be applying it to the hair as well.
All right, guys, so we've got our Kurnothi Bow Hunter all airbrushed up here. And those are the last steps for the airbrushing on our red thatchwork armor. So now we're going to switch over to the brush. My palette over here, I'm going to put a couple palettes, a uh, couple colors out, rather. It's my rust brown from the previous step. I'm also going to put out uh, some Harvest Brown from Reaper. This is a much more orangey brown. Turn that out as well. All right, so I'm going to take my Rust Brown, thin it down to my palette a little bit here, just adding a little bit of water. wick the excess of the water off onto my wrist here, or this paint off. I'm going to come in and um, highlight just the very tops of the shapes of the thatchwork armor. I'm, I'm highlighting the edges that are more directly facing the, the sunlight or the source of the light. In this instance, it would be the sunlight coming from above. So I'm just keeping that in mind when we're applying these highlights. The thinner the better. This is just with the rust brown here. Consideration the symbol there in our chest. I want to have nice crisp lines. It's one of the keys here with this. And so where I can on this thatch work texture, I can use the uh, the edge of the shape. It's my advantage to help make sure I get just that one part. I'm trying to a little bit on the uh, feathers here too. We're just starting to highlight these up here. Just to add a little bit more three dimensionality to these shapes of the thatching. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to take some of my Harvest Brown here on my palette and mix it in with my Rust Brown. It's kind of like a 50 50 mix to get it kind of a midpoint between the two colors. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but also I'm going to come in and paint on some lines here to uh, add even more texture to the model. And it's very important that these are very thin lines. While we're painting these lines, it's important that they all go in the same direction. They're all parallel to each other. And that's the, the kind of key to get this kind of thatched texture. All right, so the final step here, we're just gonna accentuate this texture even more by adding a little bit of white to our mix here. And now we're like, so the first step was like highlighting the shapes that are already there. The second step is painting on our own shapes and the lines and, the sh and, and uh, for the texture. 
Now the final step is highlighting the shapes that we painted. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white here to my mix. You can see our kind of progression of color. A little bit of water to make sure it's nice and thin and nice and flowing off my brush. And uh, with these lines, I'm not I'm not painting over the lines that I just uh, established in the last turn. I'm not painting this color over those entire lines. I'm just putting it on the parts of those lines that are most towards the source of the light. So I'm highlighting those lines that I might that I painted on myself, making them look a little bit more three dimensional. see which it's important to see which way these streaks should be going I'm just using the shapes that are already there to help me determine that they usually tend to kind of crisscross so like one will go we'll be going you know, more towards the left. One next to will be going more towards the right. All right. There you go. You can keep working on that until you're satisfied, but she's looking pretty good for me. So I'm gonna call it done for the thatch worked armor here. And so yeah, that's how you paint uh, thatchwork texture armor. Um, so far, these Kernothi models from Games Workshop are one of the few uh, models I've seen with this kind of textured armor on them before. But I really think it's very interesting, and you can even uh, you know freehand this kind of design on a flat piece of armor yourself, following these same kind of techniques. You just have to go in beforehand with an initial step to. Uh, to block in where all of your shapes are going to be as far as the thatches go. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, stay tuned for further tutorial videos. We'll be showing you how to do all kinds of awesome stuff here at White Metal Games. So see you guys next time.